just a few days ago. This portfolio was featured as site of the day on awards. The site had this real interesting intro animation, combining animated text moving along circular paths with a loading counter in the center. I found the concept super interesting, something I hadn't really seen on any other site before. It looked like a fun challenge and there was no way I wasn't going to try rebuilding it. So over the weekend, I spent a few hours exploring different approaches and after some trial and error, I ended up with this version that's pretty close to the original experience. For this project, my main focus was the intro, specifically how the text animates in orbit, so I didn't spend much time on the rest of the layout. The original looks like it was built with Pixie.js or something WebGL based, but I wanted to have a simpler, more lightweight solution, so I went with SVGs instead. The text you see here is created using SVG text path elements and the animation is driven by dynamically changing the text length and start offset values using GSAP. In this video, I'll show you how to build a similar loading experience by combining SVG and GSAP step by step. If you find these kinds of rebuilds helpful, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you'd like to access the source code for this project, along with hundreds of other similar micro projects and a brand new website template every month, you can check out the pro membership via the link in the description. Alright, let's jump into the code. First of all, I'll start by creating a div with the class loader. This is our main preloader wrapper. It's going to sit on top of everything while the rest of the page loads in the background. Inside that loader, I'll add an inline SVG element. This will hold all the circular paths that the orbiting text will follow. I'm setting a custom view box here to give us more room in all directions, especially since the paths will be quite large and centered. It will have eight path elements. Each one represents a circular orbit with slightly different radius stacked from the outermost ring down to the innermost. You can create these kinds of circular paths manually or generate them easily in a tool like Figma or maybe just use Claude or something. One important thing, you'll notice that each arc is repeated multiple times inside the same path. The reason for that is, when we later animate text along these paths, we want the full circle to stay intact visually even as the text moves around. If the path only had a single arc, you'd start to see clipping or layout issues when text rotates or slides across edge points. By looping the arc several times, we basically trick the browser into treating the path as a seamless closed ring even though it technically isn't. Also, each path gets its own unique ID and we'll use these later to attach text elements with text path. Next, I'll add 8 text elements, each one containing a text path inside it. These are the actual words that will animate around each of the orbit paths we just created. Each text path is linked to one of those circular paths using the href attribute, and we then control how the text is positioned along the path using two key attributes, start offset and text length. The start offset determines where the text begins along the path. For example, if we set it to 30%, the text will start one third of the way around the circle. We'll tweak this value slightly for each orbit just to make sure the words feel nicely spaced out as they rotate. Then there is text length which defines how much space the text should occupy along the path. You can set this using percentage values but I found that using fixed numbers gave me more control especially when animating the text dynamically later on with GSAP. Basically, by adjusting the text length, we can stretch or compress the text across the path and then animate the value to create a growing or expanding effect. I tested a few different values here and just picked the ones that looked balanced with nice gaps between the letters. So depending on the length of your text, you might need to play around with these to get the spacing and motion feeling right. For now, I'll just paste in some example labels but you can swap these out with whatever makes sense for your own projects. Right after that, I'll add a new div with the class counter. Inside it, I'll place a simple paragraph tag with a starting value of 0. This is the loading counter, we'll animate this number from 0 to 100 using GSAP once the preloader sequence begins. It sits in the center of the screen and acts as the visual loading indicator while the orbit text animates around it. Next, I'll move on to the main content of the page. I'll create a section with the class hero. This is where the landing content will appear once the loader fades out. Inside the hero section, I'll first add a div with the class hero background. This will hold the background image. I'll place an image tag inside it and just use some placeholder source for now. We'll animate this background slightly on load to create a zoom out effect. Below that, I'll add another div with the class hero copy. Inside, I'll include a paragraph and paste some placeholder text. This is where we'll animate the hero heading. Each word will rise into place once the preloader is complete. That takes care of the initial HTML setup. 
Now that everything is in place structurally, we'll jump into the CSS and style each part, starting with the loader, SVG and Orbit text. First of all, I'll import the inter font from Google Fonts. This is going to be our main typeface across the entire layout. Then I'll define three color variables inside the root selector. These will act as our base colors throughout the project. One for the lightest background, one for off-white or muted tone, and one for the darkest text color. Next, I'll apply a global reset using the universal selector. This removes any default margins and paddings and sets up a predictable box sizing model across all elements, which just helps everything behave more consistently during layout. Inside the body, I'll apply an inter font as the default font family. This will carry across the entire page unless we override it elsewhere. Then I'll move on to images. Here I'm making sure that all image tags stretch to fill their containers both horizontally and vertically and I'll use object fit to make sure the image scales proportionally so it never looks stretched or distorted regardless of screen size. After that, I'll style the paragraph tags. I'm setting all paragraph text to uppercase and giving it a medium font weight. Now I'll start styling the hero section. This section takes up the full screen and uses flexbox to center everything in the middle, both vertically and horizontally. It's positioned relatively so that we can absolutely position elements like the background inside it later. And I'll also make sure any overflow is hidden. Inside that, we have the hero background, which is the background image container for the hero section. I'll position this absolutely to make sure it fills the entire hero section. And I'll apply a slight scale up by default. This lets us animate a subtle zoom effect later when the loader finishes. I'm also using will change here to hint the browser about the transform, which can help with performance during that animation. Next, I'll style the main hero copy. For now, I'm targeting the paragraph inside the hero copy and I'll set its text color to one of the base color variables. Then, I'll add the styling for the word class, which we'll be using later when we split the hero heading using split text. Each word will be wrapped in a span with this class and I'm giving it relative positioning and setting up the transform to push it down vertically out of view. That way, we can animate each word upward during the hero reveal using GSAP. Now, let's move on to styling the loader. The loader is fixed to fill the entire screen and it centers the SVG using flexbox. I am giving it a background color using one of the lighter base variables and setting the text color to the dark base so the orbiting text shows up clearly against the background. Just like before, I am also applying will change to opacity so that any fade animations later run smoothly. And I will set a high Z index to make sure it sits on top of everything else until it fades out. Inside the loader, we have the counter which is the number that takes up from 0 to 100. I'll center this using absolute positioning and a quick transform trick to make sure it stays dead center regardless of screen size. Next, I'll style the SVG itself. I'm setting its width and height to scale proportionally within the loader, giving it a bit of breathing room inside the container. For all the SVG pads, I'll remove the default fill. Since we are only using them as invisible guides for the text, we don't actually want them to be visible. Then, I'll style the orbiting text. All the orbit text elements are styled with a dark base color, converted to uppercase and given a fairly bold weight so they stand out while rotating. I am also increasing the font size to make the orbit feel more dramatic and readable. Finally, I'll add a media query for smaller screens. Once the screen goes below a certain width, I'll pump up the size of the SVG so that it fills the viewport more comfortably and I'll slightly increase the orbit text size as well just to make sure everything remains readable even on mobile. And that wraps up all the styling. Now that everything is in place visually, we'll move on to the fun part. Let's jump into the JavaScript and start animating this. First of all, I'll start by importing GSAP. Then I'll import two GSAP plugins. The first one is split text, which we'll use to break text into smaller pieces so we can animate them individually. The second one is custom ease, which allows us to define our own easing curve instead of relying only on the default eases. Next, I'll register both of these plugins with GSAP. This step is important. Without registering them, GSAP won't recognize or allow us to use these plugins later in the animation. After that, I'll create a custom easing curve called Hop. This easing gives the animation a slightly more powerful ease in and out, which we'll reuse later for the hero text animation. Next, I'll split the hero text using split text. Here, I'm targeting the paragraph inside the hero copy and splitting it into words. Each word gets wrapped in its own element and assigned the class word. This is why we added styling for word class earlier in the CSS. By default, each word starts off positioned below the screen and later we'll animate them upward one by one. At this point, the text hasn't animated yet. We are just preparing it so GSAP can control each word individually later. Next, I'll grab all the text path elements inside that loader SVG. These are the orbiting text labels we created earlier 
The words that move along the circular paths. We'll be animating these by modifying GSAP attributes directly, so we need references to all of them in JavaScript. Now, before animating anything, I'll capture the starting state of each text path. First, I'll loop over all the text paths and read their initial text length values. This gives us the default width that each word occupies along its circular path. I'm converting these values into numbers and storing them in an array because we'll need them later when we calculate how much each word should expand during the animation. Then I'll do the same thing for start offset. This value tells us where along the circular path the text starts. By storing the initial offsets, we can later adjust them dynamically to keep the text visually centered even as it stretches or compresses along the path. At this stage, we are not animating anything yet. We are just collecting the baseline data so we can make smarter calculations later instead of hard coding values blindly. Next, I'll define an array called target text length. These values represent the final text length we want each orbiting word to animate toward. You'll notice that the values are longer for the outer orbits and smaller for the inner ones. That's intentional. I arrived at these values through trial and error, basically testing how far the text should stretch along each orbit before it starts feeling either too cramped or too spaced out. Because each word has a different length and each orbit has a different circumference, there is no single value that works for all of them. So instead of using percentages, I found it easier to dial this in manually until the spacing felt visually balanced. Later on, we'll animate from the original text length to these target values and that's what creates the expanding or contracting motion along the circular paths. Right after that, I'll define another array called orbit radius. Each value here represents the radius of one circular path in the SVG starting from the outermost orbit and moving inward. These numbers match the circles we drew earlier in the SVG. We'll use these values to calculate how long the path is, which is important because the text moving along a larger circle needs slightly more time to feel smooth compared to a smaller one. So instead of giving every orbit the same animation duration, we'll scale the timing based on its radius. Next, I store the largest orbit radius in a separate variable. This gives us a reference point so we can normalize all other orbit sizes against it. In other words, we can figure out how big or small each orbit is relative to the largest one. Finally, I'll define a minimum and maximum animation duration. These values will act as boundaries. Later, when we animate the text paths, we calculate a duration for each orbit based on its radius, so outer orbits animate at a different speed compared to the inner ones. This small detail adds a lot of visual polish because everything feels connected instead of all the orbits moving at the exact same speed. So at this point, all the groundwork is in place. We have prepared the text, captured the SVG state, and defined all the values we'll need for animation. Next, we'll loop through each text path and actually animate the orbiting text, adjusting its spacing, timing, and position using GSAP. The goal here is to animate each orbiting label, both stretching the text and adjusting its position so it looks centered along its circular path. We begin by looping through each text path in order. For each one, we calculate a slight animation delay and we do this in reverse, meaning the outermost orbit starts first and the innermost last. This reversed stagger creates a more cinematic cascading animation rather than having everything start at once. The delay between each orbit is short around a tenth of a second, just enough to make the motion feel organic and layered. Then we grab the specific radius for the current orbit. Since we have already defined a custom radius value for each path, this lets us animate each circle individually based on how big or small it is. Now here is where it gets interesting. The animation duration isn't fixed. Instead, we dynamically scale it based on the orbit's radius. To achieve that, we calculate the ratio between the current orbit's radius and the largest one. This gives us a value between 0 and 1. We then use that ratio to interpolate between a minimum and maximum duration. So, if it's large, its ratio is higher. This adds a natural pacing to the motion, making the loader feel smooth and especially aware. Next, we calculate the full path length of the circle using the standard circumference formula, which is 2 times pi times the radius. We scale this up by a factor of 3 to exaggerate the curve, making it visually more open and letting the text travel a greater distance around the circle. Once we have the path length, we calculate how much we want to stretch the text. This is the difference between its target text length and the one it started with. But there is a visual side effect here. When you stretch a label, it expands outward from its anchor point. So, to keep it visually centered along the orbit, we shift its offset backwards by half the amount it stretched. We then normalize this shift relative to the circle's path length and convert it into percentage because the circular text is defined in percent, not in pixels. After we calculate the final offset, we animate the label, we stretch the text to its target length and apply the corrected offset to keep it centered. 
This animation uses a smooth easing function to make the transition gentle and elegant. We also enable the yo-yo behavior, which means the text stretches outward, then comes back in and repeats that cycle infinitely. The result is that every orbiting label pulses in and out around its circle, each at its own speed and with a slightly staggered rhythm. But we are not done yet. To add even more life to the loader, we animate the entire SVG by slowly rotating it back and forth. We start with no rotation and every few seconds, we randomly decide whether to rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. The rotation amount is subtle, just 25 degrees and each motion uses the same smooth easing we used before. Now let's bring everything together in our final timeline. First, we create a simple animated counter. That's the number you see ticking up from 0 to 100 in the center. We do this by targeting the paragraph inside the counter element and setting up a custom object with a value starting at 0. This object will act like a dummy variable that GSAP can animate smoothly. We animate that value from 0 to 100 over 4 seconds with 1 second delay so the orbit animation can begin first. As the animations plays, we use GSAP's on orbit callback function to update the actual text inside the counter by rounding the animated value and displaying it on screen. That gives us the smooth progressive ticking effect. Once the value hits 100, we fade out the entire counter container. We let it sit visible for another second before fading out so the user has a moment to fully register the complete state. Next, we animate the orbit text labels again, but this time we are using them as part of the exit sequence. We start by selecting all the orbit label elements and right away hiding them by setting their opacity to zero. Then we reverse that order. The idea is to fade them in, which gives the animation a more dramatic, implosive energy, like the loader is powering up. We animate them back to full opacity one by one using a quick staggered fade in. After a short pause, we fade them all back out in the same reverse order with a slightly faster stagger so it feels snappy and conclusive. When that's done, we start removing the preloader completely, we fade out the entire loader container and once that fade is complete, we actually remove it from the DOM. That keeps our page clean and prevents any leftover elements from interfering with the layout. Then, with the preloader gone, we begin animating the hero section. First, we scale up the background, the hero background, from a smaller scale to full size. It feels like it scales out to fill the screen and we use a custom hop easing curve to give it that soft power easing. Right after that, we animate the hero copy, which we previously split into individual words. Each word animates up from below, staggered one after another, creating a smooth, cascading reveal of the main heading. Again, we use that same hop easing curve for consistency that completes our entire loader sequence from the dynamic orbit animations to a fully custom counter and a seamless end off into clean hero reveal. Everything here was timed to create a smooth, cinematic handoff from landing state to content using just HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and GSAP. So that was it. Hope you found the video helpful. See you in the next one.